I'm Dan Johnson talking to Vic Syracuse who's going to tell me some things about this airplane and about your operation. We want to hear about both. What does base leg do? Tell me about that. Well, thanks, Dan. It's base leg aviation, and I'm headquartered in Atlanta, just a little south of Atlanta. And uh, so I specialize in a few things. I'm, I'm the RV go-to guy, it seems like, in the country for a lot of pre-buys. And I'm a DAR, and okay. so I do a lot of condition inspections on RVs as well. And uh, I travel, I've been to, I think, 30 states so far doing pre-buys. Is that right? Well, yeah. I write for Kit Planes. I have a monthly column called uh, Checkpoints. Okay, I've seen that. Oh, good. I also do a little unairworthy piece in there, so with pictures. I uh, hope that helps people where to look for things on their own airplanes. And uh, I'm trying to think what else I do. I chair the Home Bill Council for EAA. Oh, wow. And I'm on the board of directors for EAA as well. Well, you got uh, quite a few roles there. That's a lot of hats to wear. We're having a lot of fun in aviation. Well, that's great. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who need those things at one time or another, one of those things. It's great to have people out there with experience doing it. So thank you. Thank you. That's great. Um, I am involved on pre buys on them once they get out in the field and somebody wants to sell them. I am a DAR for amateur built airplanes, uh, composite, uh, tube and fabric, and aluminum. And that means I do go license them when somebody's built one. So now we're looking at uh, uh, the Vans RV12 here. Is this one that you've built or is this one that they have built? No, this is the factory airplane. Okay. Okay, so this is an example of our SLSA Flyaway RV12. Okay. It's a second generation RV12 in that it's got the new 912 IS, the injected engine in it, and a whole bunch of improvements in the fuselage area. So Vans is one of those companies that, if you look, we've got a bunch of models in almost a second generation. So like the RV7 is everything we wanted improved in an RV6. This RV12 with the IS is a lot of improvements in the cockpit that everybody wanted. There's things such as a handle, a cup holder, some outlets. Everybody uses ForeFlight or an iPad anymore, right? So, uh, and uh, the new engine. But how would you designate that this is one of the ones with the new stuff on it? Is there a way to know that? Uh, it's just the RV12 IS, okay, and you can you can you can uh, get this as a kit and still have all the improvements and have it as amateur built, okay, or an ELSA with the 912 IS engine in it, and the Flyway this version only comes with the IS engine in it. So some of the changes you talked about, uh, you know, cup holders seem minor, but actually minor. aren't so minor because if the bottle of water you took with you That's rolls right. underneath the rudder pedals, That's right. it's not so minor at all anymore, so a cup holder actually has real value. Well, it does. As an example, uh, one of the major changes, I would call it, is the fuel tank is now in the back. Uh, all the way across the rear baggage compartment. Uh, yeah, it was just on one side. It was on well, one was side, that? that's correct. And it's a little more fuel. It's got about 20, a little over 20 gallons of fuel in it now, 20.9, I think. And that cup holder comes in real handy because we got over five hours of fuel now. Yeah, right. So it's nice to have a drink of water. And you're not using so much of it with this engine either. It's about 25% more fuel efficient yeah. than the ULS. Yeah, pretty yes. impressive. Okay, anything else about the fuselage or anything um, else changed? There's that's a notable? handle, makes it much easier to get in and out. Yeah, uh, so let me open the canopy here. Let me see so that. You can see I this. do okay. have opportunity to fly RV12 in my home airport. And I oh, enjoy great. the airplane. Great. Uh, but it does not have a handle. Okay. So where is the handle? Ah, I so see the it there. Yep. right here. Okay. okay. You know what? That would be pretty handy too. It's it's really. Uh, handy. I've gotten in without okay. geeking anything <laughs> up, but yeah. it's uh, there's you know okay. What do I grab? And and the camera should show it down here. The step is not on the back like it is on so many. Light play, uh, so many low wings. It's on the front, which gives you then. Uh, to me, I like this step up here a lot better than on the back, where it's always tilts the airplane down when you get on it and like that. And now, so in the RV12, as long as I talked about entry process and whatnot, step here, step on the wing, but then right on the floor. Right on the floor. And yes, then the seat's you can just, out of the way. Then you can grab that handle and just lower yourself yes. down on the seat. Is that yes. about how you yes. do it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you step right on. And while we're talking about the seats and the really new feature on the IS that I like is the seats are very quickly adjustable. They're ah, now okay. spring-loaded instead of having to pull out piano hinge. They have three different positions at the bottom and three different positions at the top. So as an example, I, I flew somebody earlier had was six foot seven and they wow. fit in there very nicely. Is that right? Yes. Six seven. Yes. But now let's talk about the engine. Now you've flown the aircraft with the uh, ULS, the carbureted version before. Yes, I have. And you've flown this one now. So give me give me your feel, how it feels on the RV-12, the differences. Uh, so it's, you know, not a whole lot of difference. It does climb about 100, 100 feet a minute difference. Does it really? Yeah, that's so quite you get a, a little more, yeah. 100, me 100 feet more is quite yeah. a bit. It's 100, I think it's 115 at full throttle and then 100 
normal cruise, but it does climb faster. I noticed that difference. Okay. okay? Uh, and surprisingly, it's 25% more fuel efficient. Yeah, right. The fuel which efficiency is, is just uh, amazing. As an example, uh, I flew it from the Sebring Air Show in the spring at 10.5 all the way back to Atlanta, and I was I was 117 knots true airspeed, no tailwind. I got no to, tailwind. I got back to Atlanta in three hours and 15 minutes, and I still had two and a half hours of fuel left. Wow. That's where that cup holder comes in. Yeah, yeah. right, right. And then while we're on the engine, Dan, the other thing I really like about the 912 IS, ah, yes. as I've been flying the ULS since, uh, I don't know, I think 1991, I built three kit foxes with it. Okay. I love the engine. It's a great engine, but it's always been electrically just a little bit disabled. Okay, it didn't have much of a electrical pack on it. The new one, and you know how pilots are. We've got to have all the well, stuff, we, right? In their defense, it didn't need that That's back correct. then. They That's were correct. correct to do what yes. they did then. Yes. Today, yes. yeah, we all want to plug something yeah. in. Yeah, and the neat thing about today is we not only... Uh, we've come just as far with the, uh, I think it's a 20 plus amp alternator for real, as opposed to your voltage starting to drop off at those. Now we've got all LED lighting as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's funny, we have an airplane here with all the toys you would want. Uh, you know, dual screens, ADSB, full autopilot, night legal with wigwag, dual landing lights, and everything, and it runs about 10 amps in flight. <laughs> Is that right? It's very, well, very you're not nice. even close to its capacity no, of its no, generation. Then. No. Yeah. Excellent. Good stuff. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's deviate just a little bit, and I want you to tell me since you've got all this experience, I want to ask you a few more questions about flying the airplane. So takeoff is very, very normal. It's a castering nose wheel, just like a Grumman aircraft. Okay. Okay. Or a Cirrus. Or a Cirrus, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, but more weight-wise, like a Grumman than yeah, a Cirrus and power-wise. Uh, a lot of rudder authority. I think I was doing a couple demos this morning at a 20-knot crosswind. Great, yeah, great big okay. old rudder back yeah. there. Can't make the tail too big in my opinion. No, so. no, no. So normal acceleration. And what I like to teach everybody is no more than three sec no less than three seconds from idle to full power. In other words, don't cob it. Right, it's 1001, 1002, 1003, and then we should have full throttle. So on this one, by that time, you're rolling and you've got good directional control. And on pavement, it's about a 500 foot takeoff. A, a full boat, one gentleman called full boat, we actually took off at gross weight, and uh, we were about 1200 feet a minute here. Okay, so you're climbing up, uh, you know, 800 to 1200 feet a minute. Yep. Uh, you, in your case, when you took your flight back from uh, Sun and Fun, I think you said it was, you went up to 10.5. Mm -hmm. So you can get up to altitudes, no problem. Right. And uh, now tell me about the in flight. Over so, the in maneuver. Flight, so uh, normal climb power is full throttle, and we're seeing about maybe 5200, 5300 RPMs on the engine. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, then when I level off, you pull it back to, we've got this one set up, this is a ground adjustable propeller. So we have it set up for right about 97, 98%, which sounds high to people used to coming from Lycomings, but no, right. that's where you run this one. Right. And so it, about, it likes to be there. It yeah, does, right. exactly. So it's 50, And it can be there all day. It can be there all day, right? right? At 53 to 5400 RPMs is what I turn, and that was burning 3.7 gallons an hour. 3.7, okay. And 117 knots cruise speed. Yeah, that's okay. uh, those are all good numbers. Tell me about the handling at not cruise speeds. Okay, so if you notice, the RV-12 has full, what we call flapperons, so it's ailerons and flaps, and uh, as I love to show uh, people that I take flying, I'll, I'll set this thing up for final approach speed, which is about 60 knots, and it flies completely hands-off. So you trim it, we've got electric trim uh, on, a st on a stabilator, and it'll fly hands-off at 60 knots, and it, with full aileron control, no mush at all. And it'll fly, you can sightsee all day long at that power setting. That's usually around 3,000 RPMs or less, so you're not hardly burning two gallons an hour, right, I think. Right. And uh, it, it turns, does real nice. Uh, if you want to stall it, you just pull the power back, actually, and the stick will come all the way back. And it, it never really breaks in a stall. It kind of mushes kind of thing. And if you accelerate it, you'll get a little bit of a break, but then it'll recover by itself, actually. But standard recovery, obviously, is Excellent. full power. We have electric flaps. I think they fully deploy in about two and a half seconds. So there's no delay. To what, uh, to what degrees? Uh, 24 degrees. There's, there, it's marked actually on the EFIS at 12 and then 24 degrees. Okay. okay. Right. So usually I'll set up full flaps for landing. And it comes right down at 60 knots. It's got an angle of attack. Uh, beep, beep, beep kind of audio for you and fly that all the way down final and if you fly that right when it those wheels smack you're out of uh, out of airspeed okay and now you got a taxi back so some people go yeah but you got that nose castery wheel I'm not used to that and indeed if you're not used to it it's a little different but tell me how that part works yes yeah, so and you're dead on if you're not used to it the first time it's like oh what's going on here because the first thing you'll notice if you've trained in something like a Cessna or or a Piper that has the linkage connected to the nose wheel it's not as stiff in the RV 12 because there is no linkage mm -hmm. there 
-hmm. But as long as you he's carry... He's just moving the rudder pedals. You're just moving the rudder pedals, but there's the key. And the key is to keep some airflow across that rudder with engine speed. If you don't, you're going to wear the brakes out. Okay? Just, and, and it takes about, usually from what I've seen, one or two flights, and then it just clicks with yeah. everybody. All right, so... Um, it's easy to get convinced about this airplane. If I said, okay, Vic, uh, you, you sell these as well, um, how long would it take me to get one? A fully built one. So if you want a fully built one right now, our delivery time is uh, fall of next year. So a little less than a year, okay. but uh, we're pretty well backed up. It okay, is. how about a kit? If I said, no, nope, I want to I build one. I want to have that experience as well. How long to get an RV-12 kit? So all, all of the components are available today for the kit. Uh, I think the empanage and fuselage are actually in stock. So you can okay. just order those right off. So and you could probably start your with doorstep. something to get going right away. That's correct. All right, great. Well, it's a lot of information. I'm sure I didn't ask every question that some of our viewers might want to ask you. So where do we find you on the web, Vic, so they can ask more questions? So you can go to vansaircraft.com. Okay. okay. Uh, and there's uh, all kinds of facts on that uh, website. You can call out there. Eric Rushing is actually the gentleman to talk to at the factory on the whole RV-12 program. Okay. Okay. And I'm certainly available. You can see my contact information there on base like aviation.com. Okay, very good. More about the RV-12, lots of other light sport, light kit, and ultralight aircraft available on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Vic Syracuse and myself here at DeLand Showcase 2018.